Well, hello again. Um, as you can see, we've, uh, we've shifted locations. Uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with, uh, with the, the building at St. John Stevensville, we are now in the Morningstar Gallery. We have a, attached to the church is a small art gallery that, uh, that has quite a lovely collection, including, including a collection of Carl Beam original pieces that is second, I am told, only to the Art Gallery of Ontario. I thought it would be nice to be here uh, because uh, today is, for those of us who, who follow the church year, today is Ascension Sunday. And, um, and Ascension Sunday is always kind of an, an uncomfortable Sunday for me because um, it, it comes from a time, so the story is, is expressive of an understanding of our reality where heaven is above us, hell is below us, and we're in the center plane, as it were. And so today, our, our story tells us that Jesus ascends into heaven, so goes up into heaven, and the apostles, or those who are gathered with him, stand watching him rise up to heaven. But we understand, or we know, we, we're, we come at this from a different perspective now, where we understand that, that there is no up, right? So if you think about it, where I am right now, up is up, and down is down, but if I was on the other side of the planet, my down would then be my up and my anyway. So you, you get the you get it right. It's a it's a bit of a, a conundrum for me. How to deal with this with this sense of of Jesus being lifted or departing and what that means. Before I get into the to kind of unpacking that a little bit, I, I just want to share a few things from the readings that that Rick offered. Um, earlier, not because I want to preach on them, but just because I want to lift them up um, as, as things that we might want to think about as people of faith. So the first thing, from the Acts of the Apostles, you notice that, that, um, that the, the, the Apostles are all named when they go into the upper room, and then it says that they were also there with certain women including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. So this, lives a, this raises a question for, for some of us um, who, you know, those who want to think that, that Mary was perpetually a virgin so that, so that there would be no other children. Um, but here we have, we have the, the, the author of, of the of the Acts, Luke, we, we believe to be Luke, who names Jesus' brothers who are gathered in that upper room with their mother and the other apostles. That's a, it's an interesting kind of little phrase that, 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 we are, that, we're, that we're given. Other piece is in, in the Gospel that Rick read from, from the Gospel of John, Jesus, in, in the context of his prayer, Says to, says to God, as he prays, that not one of those who you gave me have I lost. Now, that, that opens up a whole bunch of questions if we think about, well, what about, what about Judas? And what about, what about Judas's role in the story? And was he lost? According to Jesus, he's lost none. And he will lose none. And so then, what does that mean for, for the role that Judas plays in the story? So just a couple of questions that I, I, I kind of wrestle with from time to time. Um, I actually, I, I've done a few sermons on, on the role of Judas and, and the character of Judas. Um, and perhaps, you know, somewhere down the line, I'll, I'll do that again. But here we are, so Ascension Sunday. So Jesus, Jesus, we're told, is like now rises up to heaven. And while the apostles are sitting there and they're watching, they're watching this happen, um, two, two men, or men, angels, we don't, we're not really clear on, on 
what who these people who these beings are, but they they appear bef like in front of the apostles, and they say, "Why are you looking up? Why are you looking up to watch this happen?" Um, and then they say, "Because Jesus will return in the same way." But what I want to pick up on is, so they ask the they ask the apostles, "Why are you looking up?" What is, it that, what is it that they are trying to do? They're, they're trying to hold on to the last vestige of, of the, the presence of Jesus um, before, before he's actually now departed. And I, as I read that and I think about it, I'm, I'm taken back to the Gospels and I'm taken back to, to the places where Jesus says, you know, you can, well, so on the one hand, Jesus says, you know, don't look out there for heaven. Don't look over, don't look out there. Don't look above you. Don't look behind you. Because what? Because heaven is within you. The heaven where, where we go, we are, we are called, we are, we are gifted. We are gifted with the reality of heaven in our being, in our being. And so, and so as the apostles are watching Jesus be lifted, they're forgetting, they're forgetting that piece. And the other thing that I think they're forgetting is that Jesus says, um, remember in Matthew 25, Jesus says, you know, as you did these for the least of, of my children, you did them to me. So, and, and remember that's, you know, clothing the naked and feeding the hungry and giving drink to the thirsty, etc. Visiting the, the sick or the hospitalized or the imprisoned. And Jesus says, when you did that, you did that for me. So Jesus is actually telling the apostles of the day, but reminding us because I'm going to, I'm going to remind us again that, that scripture, that scripture is not simply words on a page. Scripture is so much more than mere words on the page. Scripture is the, is, a, is the truth, the truth of our being, the truth of our reality presented to us from the lips, the, the teachings of Jesus and the, and the prophets and, and those before them. But it's a living word. It's, it is just as meaningful. It is meant just as much for us today as it was meant for the apostles and disciples who walked with Jesus um, 2,000 plus or minus years ago. And so, so the apostles, it seems to me that, they've, that, they are, that they're forgetting that this presence, that Jesus is present with us always, always. That we need only, all we need to do is to open our eyes to 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 enter into the relationship from a from a heart place and and if we can do that we will we will come to recognize that Jesus is Jesus has not been lifted up beyond us been taken away from us that Jesus is more is is in some ways more present to us today because Jesus is wherever we are if we enter into our if we walk our lives if we walk the streets of, of our lives with that with that sense of with that vision with with our eyes open to that reality that Jesus that Jesus is is present at all times and and all we need to do is look into the face of the person who is sitting across from us. All we need to do is to, is to hear the, the stories and the news from the perspective of, of God and God's desire for humanity and God's dream for creation. That in those, that, so that in those interactions, in those interactions, we are confronted, we are confronted with the person of Jesus in our midst always um, so the ascension story the ascension story the reason it gives me a little bit of trouble is because it, it it has this sense that in this in this little 
piece of time, in this little piece of time. So Jesus is, is, is ascended to heaven, and then the next, the next piece, so next Sunday, is actually Pentecost. When Jesus is, the promise that Jesus makes in Scripture, in John's Gospel, that the Advocate or the, or the, the Holy Spirit will be, will, will be given to the apostles, the disciples, to the church, but in that small period of time between the ascension of Jesus and the, and the descension, I guess, of the Holy Spirit, that, there, that, that somehow there, we're, we're left looking, we're left searching for, for the presence of Christ in our midst. And I don't think that, that, I don't think that that's true. I think that Jesus... His promise was that he would that he would always be with us, and and he actually told us how that presence would be manifested. And so, on this Ascension Sunday, I join with the with with the the two strangers that, that, that appeared before the apostles, and I go, "Why are you looking up? Why are you looking up? Why are you why are you watching?" This, this, this vestige when what, when what we are called to do is to look, is to look straight ahead. To look at the, to, to really look and to see the people who are in our midst. To look and to see the realities with, within which we are living. To find a way to not only recognize God's presence, to recognize the presence of Jesus in those situations and in those people, but to manifest God's presence, to manifest the presence of Christ in those, in those situations that we, that we encounter. Because, because in some ways, in some ways, God, God's entry into those realities God's entry into those realities is by, is by the vehicle that we provide. That we, per, that we give our permission for God to enter into those realities through and with us. I, and I, I know, I, like, so I'll tell you that there are some people who might hear this and, and they may actually be rending their, their clothes and yelling heretic. And that's okay. I'm, I'm prepared to live with that. Because I take Jesus at his word. I take Jesus at his word. I take Jesus at his word when he says that the relationship that we see he, him having with God, we are called, we are, we are, that, that relationship is open to us. That we, are, that we are invited into that kind of closeness with our Creator. I'm, I take Jesus at His word when He tells me, when He tells me that the things that I have seen Him do, that I am, that I am called to do greater things. Now, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but I take Him at His word. I take him at his word when he says that he is present in all of these situations. When I encounter the other, I encounter him. I believe, I believe that he's telling me the truth. And so I believe that when I, when, when I walk into a situation, when I walk into a meeting, when I walk into a, a gathering of any sort, when I walk into worship, that I bring God with me. That I, that I bring Jesus Christ into that situation. And, and, at times, at times, I might be the only one, I might be the only one who is doing that consciously. That I might, that, that, so, I've talked about before, I've talked about going into council meetings or going into, uh, BIA meetings or Chamber of Commerce meetings and going in identifying myself identifying myself as a member of the faith community because I want people to know that, that God is present in those places I want them to know that, 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 that the truth of the gospel the truth of, of, of our faith is, is just as true in that 
place as it is in our sanctuary. That the, that the justice that we are called to in worship is, is the same as the justice we are called to when we consider housing policies and, and fair pay and all, of those, and all of those other aspects of our lives. I don't want to stand. I don't want to stand in the parking lot or on the front lawn looking up, looking for Jesus. I don't, I, I can't do that because, because it has been, well, to use the, the words of, the, of the, the prophet, it has been written on my heart. It has been written on my heart, the reality that Jesus is not beyond me, that Jesus is present with me, and indeed Jesus is present within me. And if that's true for me, it's true for you. And so let's, let's honor and celebrate that truth. And let's live our lives as if every encounter we have was an encounter with the divine. And every encounter that someone has with us is equally an encounter with the divine. Thanks be to God.